I want to order the regular council meeting of September 13th, 2010. Mr. Spagno, would you please call the roll? Allen. Dixon. Here. Gibbons. Here. Hannon. Present. Harrison. Present. Mowry. Here. O'Brien. Present. Pay. Here. Seven. We have seven members present. Uh, I have a chair announcement. There was an executive session of council conducted tonight, September 13th, 2010. Before we came out this evening for police personnel issues, we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, at this time, I would now like to turn the report to the official librarian's report. Okay, if we can move to the police chief's report, Lieutenant Dermer. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Good evening. Uh, chief Mackey asked me to make a few announcements tonight. Uh, one uh, is something new, that we're going to be in partnership with the Drug Enforcement Administration. And hopefully everybody spreads the word on this because I think it's an issue that affects every household in Bethel Park and that's if you have a medicine chest and I know we all do. Uh, on Saturday, September 25th over at the community center from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. they're going to be over there and they will take custody of all drugs, legal, legal pharmaceuticals that you may have <laughs> in your uh, medicine chest. You don't want to bring anything else. But in the past, I think they've often told people to flush it down the toilet. They're sort of getting away from that now. Uh, I'm, I'm sure many medicine chests in Bethel Park have pain medicine that's no longer needed, no longer wanted, and quite frankly, you don't know what to do with it. So. I'm encouraging folks to come. There's no questions asked. Nobody's going to ask you your name, nothing. There's going to be a barrel over there. Dump out everything you have. I can remember as a parent, and I'm sure everybody who is a parent did the same thing with their children. They childproofed their homes. Child, not only childproof your home, but teen-proof it too. Because the kids in, in school are getting, I don't have to tell you what is going on in, in schools. and. It, if you can get all those prescription medications out of your house, I think it would be a great thing. Uh, don't forget the date, September 25th, 2010, and it's from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. The DEA will be over there. They will take custody of everything, and it will be disposed of in a proper manner. I had a couple other announcements. Uh, in 2011, we're again going to be running a Citizens Police Academy and the Law Enforcement Apprenticeship Program, which is in conjunction with the, the students at the high school, the LEAP program. And we're going to be st starting to take applications Wednesday, January 20th, 2011. It will run, excuse me, that's when it begins. Applications are available right now. You can apply online at BethelPark.net. But the first class will begin January 20th, 2011, and run for 10 straight weeks. Uh, one other announcement I have is there's going to be the last Police Pell Pittsburgh Pirate baseball game left this year. Uh, there's discounted tickets available for Sunday, September 26th, if anybody is interested. Uh, there's an orders form on the Bethel Park website, and there's also one in the Chronicles if anybody's interested. Uh, my last announcement is in regard to vehicle entries. Throughout the municipality, we've had some issues with vehicles being entered. And there again, a little bit of prevention helps. Most of the vehicles entered are not forcibly entered. People are leaving their car doors open. They're leaving valuables, laptops, cameras, wallets even, money, credit cards in their cars. Take all your valuables out of your car. Lock your cars up. What they're trying, they'll, they'll, they're pull up at night, just go into a driveway. If the car door's open, they'll go in. If it's secured, hey, guess what? They're gonna go to somebody else's car. They're not gonna bother you. So, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Can we turn to the fire chief's report? <coughs> thank you. Good evening, my name's Dave Gerber. I'm the assistant fire chief with the Bethel Park Volunteer Fire Company, here to give you the fire chief's report for the month of August. 
month of August, the Bethel Park Volunteer Fire Company ran 37 fire calls uh, for the month. We had six fires, uh, one overheat condition, uh, five hazardous conditions with no fire, two service calls, 18 uh, false alarms, and five uh, special weather details, uh, totaling 37. Uh, that brings our total calls for the year uh, up to 331. Uh, just to give you a quick breakdown, out of that 331, we've ran nine calls outside of Bethel Park, uh, 51 in Ward 1, 21 in Ward 2, 19 calls in Ward 3, 47 in Ward 4, 25 in Ward 5, 23 in Ward 6, 44 in Ward 7, uh, 65 in Ward 8, and 27 in Ward 9. Larry, you doing it again? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Again? I'm sorry. No, no, no Maurice, he's, head of, he's ahead of the game again. He's, he's, won, the, he's won the fire lottery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, being that uh, we're now in the month of September, uh, slowly the weather's starting to turn. Uh, people uh, eventually here are going to start using their fireplaces again. Uh, we just want to remind everybody that if you have a fireplace where you burn wood in it, whether it be a wood burning stove, an actual fireplace, uh, you're burning wood in it, whatever, uh, we recommend that. You get, uh, you call it chimney sweep and have them come out, clean out your uh, chimney and duct work and stuff. Uh, every year we run several calls uh, for people who have problems with their chimneys uh, on fire. Uh, save you a lot of money in the meantime if you just have somebody come in, take a quick uh, look at it, make sure everything's good. You have no cracks in the flue pipes and whatever and uh, they clean out all the uh, soot and debris and stuff from it. Uh, it'll save you a lot of headaches in the end and save us from having to come and uh, put out a fire that's going on in your chimney. So, uh, Also, we wanted to thank everybody. We had our annual open house yesterday. Uh, everything went real well. Um, the open house was done uh, on Brightwood Road here at the Brightwood Road Fire Station. Uh, I was up through the back, up through Park Avenue uh, on the street and back on Park Avenue Field. We had a car cruise and stuff going on back there. We had the helicopter come from Life Flight. Uh, just some quick thank yous for everybody. Uh, Lieutenant Dermer, if you could thank your gentleman and Chief Mackey. Uh, we appreciate all the cooperation for letting us get the roads closed and stuff because uh, we had things going on all the way from the trolley tracks, like I said, back through the uh, football field. Uh, Mr. Sagrimis, we thank you for letting us borrow the barricades and stuff that we did and all your cooperation. We thank you very much for that. Uh, also, we'd like to thank the police again for their display. They had their, uh, their vehicle down there and uh, their officer was giving out uh, some police badges to the kids and uh, talking to everybody. I'd also like to thank the medics for their display down there. They were busy and in and out, so if you were there and didn't see them, they were out helping people because <laughs> uh, they were busy, I know. So, But we'd like to thank them also. Um, also, we'd like to thank all the vendors. We had a lot of vendors and stuff inside the building. Um, I know EV Hardware was there, among many others, uh, throughout Bethel Park. Uh, talking to people uh, on insurance uh, and some other safety tips and stuff as far as that goes. So we'd like to thank everybody. If you came down, we appreciate it. If not, uh, we normally do this about this time every year and just uh, listen up and we'll give you a heads up next time we're going on. Um, also, real quick, our second mailing went out for our fundraiser back in, uh, at the end of August. Uh, if you haven't donated yet, uh, as we always mention, we always Appreciate your donations. That's how the fire department runs down there is uh, off your donations. So if you'd like to donate, uh, you can just go to our website, BethelParkVFC.com, uh, and you can donate right online or to give you information what to do if you want to send a check in and stuff. Uh, and last thing, um, I was told to remind everybody, we have bingo every Saturday night starting at 645 uh, down at the Brightwood Road Fire Station. Uh, if you haven't been there, we'd love to see you. It's not nice to say it's air conditioning, but it's getting to be out of that time of year, but it's also heated. So if you'd like to come, <laughs> we'd be more than happy to have you. So other than that, questions? Thank you. Thank I you just know. really want to, Sir. would like to see everybody participate. I think we talked last month, uh, the municipalities began some preliminary discussions with the fire department on what their financial needs are for this year and in the future. Uh, as donations go down, expenses go up, we need to have a fire department. So we would rather have people donate on their own and contribute what they want versus having us trying to implement any type of a tax to cover you know, their operating expenses. So once again, I'd encourage you, if you haven't already donated, when you get your letter, 
go to the website please take time and make a donation for all the work and effort that they put in to protect our community thank you thank you okay can we turn to the mayor's report mayor morton Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, everyone. Good to see everybody out here tonight, especially all of our lion friends. Thank you for coming. We're going to do a little thing with the lions in a few minutes, uh, so um, we'll get to them. But first, we have to talk about what we always talk about first, and that's our 90-plus people, people who are 90 years old and older. Uh, we wish them all a happy birthday every month by that month. And coming up on the 1st of October will be our annual luncheon with this group. And we get out probably 40 or 50 people who are in that category, plus their caretakers that we invite to come along with them to, to help them. So that's coming up. And tonight we want to wish happy birthday to Albert Borchik, who is 91. Eileen Arsini is 92. I met Eileen Arsini in 1960. When I came here to teach school, she was working in the cafeteria over at Park Avenue. Lovely lady. James Grevenstretter, 92. Mary Gregorick, who is 90. Henrietta Johnson is 91. And Elmer Smith, God love him, is 93. I haven't seen him for a few days, but usually I see him around Panera's. Anyway, we wish them all a very happy birthday. Uh, we send them all a card, of course, in each month. Kathy over here puts together the list, makes up the little cards that we send out. I sign them, put a note on them, and we send them out to their birthdays. Okay, at this point in time, we're going to call uh, Jane up, Jane McKnight from the Lions, and we're going to do a proclamation for the Lions tonight. Before I do that, um, I just wanted to say that from my viewpoint, we had a great community day again. Uh, e even with all the problems of the, of the construction over at the high school, it worked out very well. And ever since we've moved that uh, site, or, or gone up in the middle of the campus to do the community day versus doing it down on Black Hawk Drive, people have commented, they like it up there. So mm -hmm. I said, well, I don't know what this site's going to look like in another couple of years, so I don't know what we'll be doing. We'll figure it out. Anyway, Jane, we're going to do a proclamation for the for the Lions from the Mayor of Municipality of Bethel Park in recognition of Bethel Park Lions White Cane Day. <clears throat> it's coming up on October 9th, 2010. Whereas the Bethel Park Lions Club was chartered in February of 1943 as uh, the Lions Club of Bethel Township, and whereas the Bethel Park Lions Club has faithfully served this community for 67 years, and whereas said service has included such things as supporting the Pittsburgh Visual Services, Western Pennsylvania School for, excuse me, School for the Blind, uh, Medical Eye Bank of Western <coughs> Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh Hearing and Speech Services, Pennsylvania Lions Hearing Research Foundation, the Blind Bowlers Tournament, the Lions Eye Mobile, Beacon Lodge Camp for the Blind, Bethel Lions Park, scholarships for local students, the Bethel Park Library, the Bethel Park Community Center, and many, many more. And whereas the Bethel Park Lions will be conducting White Cane Day as a fundraiser for their many public services, I urge all citizens who are approached by a Bethel Park Lion to support this very worthy cause. Now therefore, I as the Mayor of the Municipality of Bethel Park do hereby proclaim that Saturday, October 9th, 2010, to be White Cane Day in honor and recognition of the work of the Lions. So there you go, Jane. There's Thank your you. proclamation. Thank you, Mayor Morton, for this recognition on behalf of the uh, Lions Club of Bethel Park 14B. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate it, and we hope we do a good job. Well, we, we thank you for all the services you do as well. So thank, thank you, you so much. much. Yes. There's thank your proclamation. You. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Did you want to talk, Jim? No. I we want to get a group picture right before. Oh, a group picture. We can do that right afterwards. Uh, you know, right after we're done with the mayor's report, we'll go out there and do it. Okay. 
That's all we have tonight, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mayor. At this time, can we turn to the approval of the minutes and Mr. Hannon? Uh, I move that we approve the regular council meeting minutes of August 9th, 2010. <coughs> Second. There's a motion and second to approve the regular council meeting minutes of August 9, 2010. Any discussion on this item? Mr. Spagno, would you please call the roll? Dixon? Yes. Gibbons? Yes. Hannon? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Mowry? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Pate? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Mr. Hannon? I move that we approve the minutes of the special meeting of August 30th, 2010, acceptance of the resignation of Councilman Paul Martin. Second. There's a motion and second to approve the regular, or excuse me, the minutes of the special meeting of August 30th, 2010, acceptance of resignation of Councilman Paul Martin. Any discussion of this item? Mr. Murray. Mr. Harrison. I'll be voting no on this motion, and I'd like just to uh, inform people my concern. It's got to do with the uh, a, uh, word that's kicked around quite a bit now in this uh, country is transparency of government. Uh, that's something I've worried about for a long time. Ever since I've been on this council, I'm in my 37th year, we've had a monthly public meeting on the second Monday of the month, so people are well oriented to that fact in the community. On August the 26th, I got a call from Mr. Spagnol, the manager, to inform me that Mr. Damari, the president of council, had scheduled an emergency meeting for the uh, 30th. And my question was, what's, what's the emergency? Well, we got a resignation letter and uh, uh, we uh, have to uh, make an appointment for the seat within 45 days. And I said, well, that's, uh, in all my experience, based on what I've learned from the lawyers, is that the uh, time starts when the governing body accepts a resignation. The resignation time is not dictated by the person who resigns. Uh, so a couple hours later, I, and I told Mr. Spagnol I would not attend the emergency meeting. A couple hours later, Mr. Spagnol called me and told me that he had talked to the uh, solicitor and that now they were going to have a special meeting. So I said, well, I, I won't attend that either because I think it's, it's, it's unnecessary. Uh, and then... Shortly after that, I called the solicitor, Mr. McTiernan, and he returned my call on uh, Sunday. And uh, I told him that, you know, I, I'm not a lawyer, he is, but I've always understood that a resignation becomes effective when, uh, when the uh, governing body, in this case the governing body, acts on it. And I, I left that conversation thinking that uh, he, he had agreed to that. He certainly can speak for himself. But then, uh, he sent out a, an email letter on Monday, I guess. It, it, it's not time stamped, but uh, uh, in any case, indicating, well, maybe so, maybe not. Uh, but my concern is that we could have accepted that resignation tonight, advertised for 10 days, had the interviews two weeks from now, which is our normal committee meeting, and then acted on next month. Now, we're gonna act on it next month at the meeting, that's the plan, but we were informed tonight that we're gonna to exceed the 45 days and that, uh, that you know, it said, well, that's okay, it's only, it's only one day. And, and I, just, uh, I just feel that since acting tonight would have given us adequate time, uh, that's what we should have done. Thank you very much. Mr. Murray. Mr. Hannon, I, I guess I don't want to uh, get into it with, with Mr. Harris and his political view. The irony of this whole thing is if I wouldn't have called a special meeting, he would be up here tonight railing at me because I didn't call a special meeting. We didn't have time to advertise. I made the decision based on, quite frankly, the residents of Ward 7. It was nearly three weeks till our next meeting. We had the Labor Day holiday. I felt it was prudent to get out and advertise give the people a few weeks to, you know, decide if they wanted to apply or not. And I thought it was the best thing to do. I mean, like, as I said earlier, Don would have been haranguing me for not calling a special meeting. You know, it just all depends because of, of the politics that Don wants to play. I think the interesting thing is that he did acknowledge calling the solicitor. We have a policy here. Nobody on this board, including myself, is to call the solicitor 
without approval of the manager or of council. If everybody took it upon themselves to call at any time they felt necessary, could you imagine, no disrespect to our solicitor, could you imagine what our solicitor's bills would be? You know, Don often claims to be the author of the Home Rule Charter, and that's what regulates what we do, but yet he had to call the solicitor to find out to get his interpretation of when the 45 days started. To me, it was very clear. It starts when the letter is turned in. It's official when uh, the council accepts it. That's what we did. That's what the solicitor said in his letter. And really, it's, it's unfortunate Don has to continue to, to badger people about what he believes and not what really the truth is. I think it's important the residents of Ward 7 uh, have the opportunity to s send their name in give the people out of good time, you know, to find out a little bit about the candidates. And just for everybody's information, we are accepting resumes till the 16th of September. Our, ten, our plan is to advertise, or excuse me, to interview on the 27th, and then we will be appointing on the October council meeting. And to talk about Don falling outside the window of 45 days is partially true. The 45th day is on a Sunday, once again, we were advised by the solicitor because it was a Sunday. He saw no legal issue with actually having the vote on the regular council meeting. So that's kind of the truth behind it. It's just a shame that Mr. Harrison continues to play politics with the residents of this community. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. O'Brien. It's unfortunate, this whole situation. Uh, you know, Mr. Martin was a colleague I was here. And sometimes things happen to people for whatever reasons. Um, they happen. And the meeting that Mr. Myrie called, it was transparent. It was a special meeting. It was advertised, and it was here. Uh, I applaud him for calling that, to giving the citizens of this Ward 7 time to look it over. You know, running for council or putting your name up for council isn't something that you walk up to the refrigerator and say, well, I need two uh, a dozen eggs, a gallon of milk, and I'm going to run for council. It's a very serious decision in 10 days. Well, I thought Mr. Meyer did the right thing by giving the citizens of the seventh ward the most time possible to make their decision so it is as transparent and as open as possible for the successor of Mr. Martin. I'm not sure, I'm not comfortable even talking about this now because I don't like to expand somebody's bad fortune. I'm going to say a prayer for Mr. Martin. I hope his life goes on and I hope he has better fortune. And I enjoyed serving with him. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mr. O'Brien. Any other discussion? Mr. Chair. Mr. Pape. You know, this just amazes me. All these years he and I have been on this council. This man has never had one word to say good about somebody. It's always negative. Negative, negative. We said before we come out on this floor, everything was nice because he wanted something and we went along with it. There was no argument. But he tries to he if he would have come to the meeting like he should have, he'd have known why we did it. We wanted to do it because we wanted to get it over and done with. I mean, he just don't understand. He just chastises people. Sometimes, I know, I'm going to sound horny, but I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes I wonder if Mr. Harrison likes himself. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pape. Is there any other discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Dixon. Not to pile on here, but just to clarify something. The, it, it was a very sad affair that led to the resignation of Councilman Martin. It was, it was something that we wanted to put behind us as quickly as we could. I'd like to reiterate what Councilman O'Brien just said. Uh, I'll say a prayer for the man and hope that his life gets straightened out and, and uh, God bless him in his future. I think the only thing that was, uh, you know, the meeting that was, that was held was properly advertised. It was a legal public meeting. There is absolutely no reason to even raise it as an issue. The only really uh, improper thing that I see in this whole thing was, was Mr. Harrison calling our solicitor on his own without authorization from anybody and spending municipal tax money for the time because the, the solicitor will charge us for that time and rightfully so. He's entitled to charge for his time. And, and that's the only improper thing that I've seen in, throughout this whole, this whole affair. So 
Uh, you know, I, if anybody needs chastisement, I would, I would point the finger at Mr. Harrison. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Any other discussion? Mr. Murray. Mr. Harrison. I'll uh, uh, volunteer uh, to uh, pay Mr. McTiernan any costs associated with my call to him. Uh, the fact is that uh, we pay him a retainer, and, and, and this is what I call this mundane type thing covered. But if there's an additional charge, please uh, bill me, Mr. Solicitor. The other thing I want to mention, it's just sort of interesting. The, the uh, comments I made simply addressed procedure, procedural type things of this council. And now these guys up here say, I'm really embarrassed. We don't want to get this man thing done. And they're the ones that are talking about the matter. I didn't, I didn't say anything except about the procedure we used. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. You. Chairman. Mr. O'Brien. We all read the newspaper articles too, Don. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Any other discussion? <laughs> Mr. Spagna, would you please call the roll? Gibbons. Yes. Hannon. Yes. Harrison. No. <clears throat> Maori. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Pate? Yes. Dixon? Yes. Six one. Motion passes 6 1. Mr. Hannock, we turn the bills and uh, payroll. I move that we approve the bills and payrolls for the municipality per bill list number 091310 in the amount of $3,377,692.74. Second. There's a motion and second to approve the bills and payrolls for the municipality per bill list number 091310. In the amount of three million three hundred seventy-seven thousand six hundred ninety-two dollars and seventy-four cents. Any discussion of this item, Mr. Spagna? Would you please call the roll? Hannon. Yes. Harrison. Yes. Maury. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Pate. Yes. Dixon. Yes. Gibbons. Yes. Seven Motion passes seven zero. You spent a lot of money this month, Mr. Spagna. We're watching our pennies. Okay. Thank you. Okay. At this time, can we turn to the resident comments section for non-agenda items? Anybody would like to come up and state their name and address? We do have a three minute limit and into two minutes we'll acknowledge. Richard Chong, Wayne, 84, 3rd District. I find Mr. Harris, Councilman Harrison's comments of interest. Everyone has personal problems. Drinking can be a big problem. Mothers Against Drunk Driving says a prayer every day. Say a prayer for ex councilman I do. I also say a prayer for the people he didn't hit on the highway. Fortunately, there were no fatalities, no injuries. The newspapers recently had a number of articles. A police officer hit and run drunk. Today, a fit football player, south side, drunk, hit and run. This thing about driving and drinking is no laughing matter. And I hope that during the interview that you're going to conduct for the candidate of Ward 7, you ask, without a doubt, have you been stopped for DUI? Do you abuse alcohol? No further comments. Thank you very much. Just for the record also, the interviews we conduct will be open to the public. They'll be held in the caucus room starting at 6 p.m on the night of the 27th. Yes. Will there be a list of questions you're going to ask? Uh, it'll be an informal interview process that will ask the questions. One last comment. What are the qualifications for the There aren't any. Resident of the ward for one year. U.S. citizen? A U.S. citizen. US citizen. Yeah. 18 years old. No, no you got to be registered to vote in a minimum of 18 years of age. Criminal records. Right. And no criminal record, no felony record. Felony. Yeah, correct. No felony. Felony. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, if we can turn to the agenda in general policy and finance, and Mr. Hannon. First item is a resolution in opposition to force mergers and consolidations of local governments in Pennsylvania. I move that we adopt the resolution in opposition of, to forced mergers and consolidations of local governments in Pennsylvania. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. The motion and a second to adopt the resolution in opposition to forced mergers and consolidations of local governments in Pennsylvania. Any discussion of this item? Yes, uh, Mr. Harrison. 
Mr. Spagnuolo, is there anyone that uh, that could address that? That's sort of an obscure thing. I mean, basically, it's talked about making every community part of the county. Sure. That's something that I've been fighting ever since I've been involved in local politics, and I certainly participate in right now. Okay, I would ask Mr. Hannon. He brought this to our attention. Yeah, what this is is there's um, the state legislature and their uh, members in their ultimate wisdom do various things and. Uh, uh, some things are somewhat political or not political. Uh, recently, there was, I believe, two pieces of legislation introduced. One of them is a requirement that all municipalities cease to exist, and the county would be the basic form of government. And uh, that's one of them. The other one, I, I'm not quite sure the other one, but it's the issue deals with having Harrisburg mandate what local governments in Pennsylvania can do. And this information was brought through the the County Boroughs Association and the and the Association of Township Commissioners and Supervisors, and uh, that's the reason for uh, to let Harrisburg know that uh, we uh, we like things somewhat in a way we are as far as uh, what we are, but uh, that uh, having local government is a good thing for us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. Is there any other discussion, Mr. Spagnuolo? Would you please call the roll. Harrison. Yes. Mowry? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Hey? Yes. Dixon? Yes. Gibbons? Yes. Hannon? Yes. Motion passes 7 0, Mr. Hannon. Uh, next item is a resolution for the implementation of a procurement card program. I move that we adopt the resolution authorizing the implementation of a procurement card program through Easy Procure LLC and PNC Bank. Second. There's a motion and a second to adopt the resolution authorizing the implementation of a procurement card program through Easy Procure <coughs> LLC in PNC Bank. Any discussion on this item? Mr. Spagna, would you please call the roll? Mowry? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Pate? Yes. Dixon? Yes. Gibbons? Yes. Hannon? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Seven. Motions passed 7 0, Mr. Jurhan. We have no further items under, under general policy and finance, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Hannon. I just have one brief announcement. Uh, once again, we did receive our preliminary Bethel Park Municipal Budget. It is on display in the library. Uh, I will say it's once again good news, bad news. Good news is we're not proposing a tax increase for 2011. The bad news is uh, we're spending down some of our reserves money to get there. Our staff has done a, a very good job of preparing the budget. It's outlined in there. I believe we cut close to a half a million dollars from the pre-preliminary budget before it came to council because the directive was to keep it where we had a, had a balanced budget without raising taxes. We're, we're going to have our first, pump, or first meeting on on the 27th. We'll continue to have meetings as long as council wishes. Uh, we need to pass this by 30 days prior to the end of the year. So we look to have a public hearing and adopt this prior to the end of November. So check it out. Any questions, call your member of council. Please feel free to come to the public hearing, ask questions. You know, it's not a done deal. It's a good budget, but I'm sure we can we can try and make it a little better. Thank you. Mr. Morris. Mr. Harrison. I appreciate you giving me the perfect segue into the next thing I have to comment on tonight. Uh, I, I put my sign back up with the uh, superintendent, school superintendent's phone number, not that I intend for anybody to call him now, but uh, uh, that was because I would spoke to this idea of putting a, uh, a mailbox type thing for people to deposit their taxes out here in the parking lot beside ours. Uh, after I finished, uh, I asked for a verbatim of minutes, and Mr. Murray started out by saying, I do have to comment. He's talking about commenting on what I had to say. Uh, you, you notice that that happens all the time. He always passes the gavel and seems to have to say something no matter what I talk about. Uh, at, le at least he didn't suggest I lied this time, which he quite often does. But in the minutes it says, Mr. Murray, no, I'm I was told by a board member, he's talking about a school board member, uh, that uh, based on the UCs, they opted not to incur the expense of putting up a box there. That's just what they thought would be the usage of the box. Uh, I, I, I think that's an important statement. He says, I was told by a board member that that's important because uh, 
he then uh, criticizes me for giving out the phone number of the superintendent, which I did by hanging the sign there. Uh, uh, you know, I claim he's either misinformed, ill-informed, or not informed at all because I stated, and I'll tell you again, I called the school district twice. Since I didn't get a reply, I called Judy Miller, the assistant manager, asked her to call, and she called, didn't get a reply. On, on the Monday of the meeting, I called Mr. Amito, the uh, finance officer, and asked him if he had contact with somebody there. And he called, and he informed me he didn't get a reply. And, and, I'm, and the point I'm making is that a courtesy call from the school district, if they didn't want to put a box up there, that's OK. But, but all it would require would be a courtesy call saying uh, we made that decision. Telling Mr. Mari does the other council members no good at all unless he communicates that to us. So uh, I just wanted to uh, make, the, make the point that uh, uh, I, if I want to discuss items, as people probably know, I'll continue to do it. And if he feels a need to pass the gavel and, and uh, uh, make derogatory remarks, uh, suggest to see, here we go, you're suggesting that, uh, that uh, he, he said, you listen every month to political speeches that he gives, he, me, Don Harrison. Uh, I, I guess I don't consider it very political when, you, when I'm proposing an idea that's not going to fly. It sounds to me like in, in the real world that would be a political downer, not a political offer. But in any case, I just wanted to make the point that, uh, that uh, he, he bothers, no matter what, what, what the subject is, he bothers to comment on it. And, and, and I'll tell you, and then I'll get off my soapbox here. When I go, I don't do much shopping. When I go to Walmart or Giant Eagle, it's not unusual for people to approach me that have seen these meetings and comment on the fact that council, and in particular Mr. Murray, seems to trash me all the time. It doesn't bother me, I just keep doing my job. Thank you. Any other discussion from council, Mr. Mr. Yeah, right. uh, since Don set me up here, uh, you know, it's the irony of this whole mess is Don, he can come up and say what he wants. I've said that from day one. I think what I feel a need to do is to correct the record when misinformation is given out by Mr. Harrison. Many months he talks about issues and things that don't affect how this board operates. There's a procedure we go through. Everybody can come to this meeting and say whatever they want. There's been a courtesy in the past. He brought the item up on the floor. That's normally an issue that we would discuss at our committee meetings. He chooses not to do that. He chooses to come out and mislead, mis misrepresent what people say. And quite frankly, my comment to him was, it's not a very professional way to get things done, is I believe my comment. And I'm not going to go through the minutes and spend the next month uh, detailing my notes about my speech next month. But the reality of it is, do you want to get something done? Or do you want to talk about it? You know, if I want to criticize Mr. Harrison when he approached the school board member, which he alleges said the board didn't make a decision, I would have said, you need to do that. You had a request from the municipality, and you as a board a director, you need to do that. Is somebody would come up to me on council. We didn't make a decision on something. They would say to me, you need to make it do it. Yes or no, I agree. They need to get back to us. But the reality of it is to come out and talk and, and give this political speech as he always does, and they are political, make no mistake, Don's already approaching people to run for council against the incumbent members of council next year. Make, make no mistake, that's his modus operandi. He does it all the time. You know, he wants to say I chastise or I, I say derogatory things. I state the truth. He may not like it, but I state my opinion. I'm entitled to do it as a member of this board. Like I said, there's a professional way to get things done, then there's a political way just to talk about getting things done. And I'll put my uh, record of counsel up against Mr. Harrison about getting things accomplished. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. All right, any other discussion for counsel? Uh, yes, Mr. I'd Mr. like Harrison. to just, uh, I, I just want to point out that uh, Mr. Murray said that uh, I'm trying to get uh, people to run. I don't know where he got that information, but he forgot to mention that he went door to door with the candidate in the fifth ward the last time I ran. Uh, right, Mr. Murray? Uh, the, the other thing I just want to make very quickly, he criticized me for giving out the phone number to the superintendent. 
Within three days of that meeting, we got the, uh, the uh, chronicles and the calendar, and in both cases, the superintendent's number's right at the top of the list, the same number. So to, to give out the number of an, of, of an employee of the municipal, uh, in this case, the school district, and his number is well publicized in the information that gets sent to every citizen, I, I, I don't see the problem. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Bryant. And Mr. Harrison, weren't you unopposed last time? Excuse me? Weren't you unopposed last time? You ran for office? Uh, when, Thank you, when, Mr. When Chairman. Mr. Alnoni ran, Mr. Mario went. He said the last time. You were unopposed last well, time. Well, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll just, one last comment will move on. I like in the comments that Don makes to, if we all recall for nearly two years, he talked about a 700 foot, $5,000 emergency <laughs> access road at the entrance or the exit of the industrial park. You know, it's the same thing. He talks about it and talks about it, but he never responded to the community and told us how he came up with the 700 foot, $5,000 road. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Um, let's go to planning and zoning, Mr. Dixon. Uh, do we have any citizens signed up to speak? We do not, sir. Okay. We only have one item under planning and zoning this evening. It's an ordinance providing for oil and gas drilling operations as a conditional use in all zoning districts in the municipality. I move that we approve the ordinance providing for oil and gas drilling operations as a conditional use in all zoning districts in the municipality. Second. There's a motion and second to approve the ordinance providing for oil and gas drilling operations as conditional use in all zoning districts in the municipality. Any discussion on this item? Mr. President. Mr. Dixon. I uh, have expressed in the past, during our many conversations about this ordinance, uh, my serious reservations about allowing this in all zoning districts in the municipality. I don't like the notion of allowing this in residential districts, and we've discussed this as a board many times, and I'd like to have uh, Mr. McTiernan uh, discuss it a, a little bit, if you're able to at this point. Yes, uh, Mr. Dixon. As council's aware, this, of course, is an issue that's much litigated, and we have some guidance from the courts, but it's continuing to be litigated in the courts. And the ordinance that was prepared based on guidance from the Planning Commission and the planner contains uh, protections that uh, we feel, and I feel as solicitor, are legal. Uh, for example, any operation of this type is a conditional use. It would have to be approved by council. It contains certain kinds of requirements, such as appropriate notice to neighbors in the immediate vicinity of an operation, uh, requirements on notice to protect the roads from damage from heavy equipment, safety requirements such as fencing, limitations on the noise that can be produced, and time limits on operations. Um, you know, because we're a municipality, and this is primarily regulated by the state, we're, we're, municipalities are somewhat constrained in what they can do. But these are protections that everybody involved in this process thought were ones that would withstand challenge and would be helpful to the public. Now, the, one of the things we were concerned about is we wanted to make sure that the ordinance and these protections were likely to withstand a challenge. And so we were concerned, and my advice was that uh, the more you restrict the actual ability to do the uh, drilling or do the gas and oil production within the community in certain areas, that that might make the ordinance more subject to challenge. There are just a necessity limitations on drilling in smaller areas, such as residential areas, uh, residential areas in Bethel, that my feeling was, the planner's feeling was, and I think the planning process, that it's very unlikely that there could be any drilling in those areas anyway, and that it would be a mistake to try and restrict the areas because it might make the ordinance more subject to challenge. And that was sort of the thinking that went into it. So, in, you know, in summary, that by allowing it everywhere, it's very unlikely to occur in those areas, but it also removes a potential basis for challenge. I appreciate that if I can uh, jump in here. I, uh, just as a point of clarification, I am not against uh, the drilling for the Morcella Shale. I, I'm not opposed to that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, the staff has done a great job researching this and putting this ordinance together, uh, Mr. Duke in particular, in conjunction with uh, our solicitor, Mr. McTiernan. And I know that they put a document together that uh, is, is in the best interest of the community 
uh, based on their expert opinions, and, and I don't disagree with that. The, uh, the notion or the feeling is that if, uh, if we don't allow it in certain parts of the community, then uh, somebody could come in here and challenge that part of the ordinance, and if they, if they are successful in their challenge, it would essentially neutralize the entire ordinance, and then people could come in here and drill wherever they wanted to, if, if I understand that correctly. It was one of our concerns that would make it uh, the whole ordinance subject to challenge. Mm -hmm. And I understand that, and I appreciate the, uh, you know, the protections that it offers uh, the community. I just cannot seem to get my arms around the, uh, the notion of allowing drilling in a residential area. I just, it just, uh, bothers me to the extent that I can't let go of it. Uh, and I know that once the big drilling rig is done and, the, uh, and they start to extract the, the product from the ground, it's going to be a smaller, you know, more innocuous kind of uh, pump uh, on the property and not the big drilling rig. So, uh, you know, I, I just can't uh, seem to get my arms around this, uh, this notion of allowing this in a res residential district. So, you know, based on that concern, I'm going to vote against this. Uh, and you know, I would I would welcome any other comments if anybody has any. If I'm allowed to do this, see he's passing the gavel again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to say that while I share his concern, I think that we need to do something. Is this perfect? Probably not. Are we going to adjust it? Absolutely. I think we need to you know put our you know line in the sand. Well, I agree we don't want it in residential areas. I think we re really need to position ourselves, or at least set ourselves up, that if we are challenged legally, what's the strongest base to have? If we restrict it, I'm not a lawyer. My understanding is that if we restrict it to certain classifications and we lose that challenge, they can kind of come in and do what they want. If we do it on the back end and they sue us or we have litigation based on the restrictions we put on, I think, in my opinion, a judge will be much more receptive to listening to what our concerns are. Well, I agree. Uh, it's one of those things. I don't want it in my backyard. You know, we need to do something. I respect your opinion, but I think the Planning Commission spent a few months. We had some public hearings. We had some input. We stressed over it, what we wanted to do. We see what's going around in the county. This isn't probably unlike a lot of ordinances other people are adopting. Uh, I think it's the right thing for now to do. If things change, if the laws changed, uh, I think we need to look at it again, and we will. The only question I have for the solicitor, do we have the right to tax these uh, for coming into our town? Can we impose a tax? Is the question, you know, uh, I, like other members of council, have a lot of questions from people in the community, and that was one of the questions that was asked to me, so I'll just defer to the solicitor. Well, I, I didn't do any research to prepare for that question, but I feel pretty confident you do not have that power under those statutes that allow taxes by municipalities. You know, with the power of Bethel Park to tax is restricted, you won't be surprised, by the Pennsylvania legislature. They keep control of what you can tax and what you can't tax, and you can imagine they're very sensitive about what they allow a municipality to tax. So unless they give you the express power legally to impose any kind of a tax, you do not have that power. It must be confirmed. Thank you. Mr. Murray. Mr. Harrison. I'll just point out there, if people read the paper probably know there's almost every day there's a story in the paper about uh, activity in the Marcellus Shield thing. And the state is seriously considering, and I suspect will pass what they call a severance tax, which presumably is a tax on the uh, people who drill to cover expenses for maintaining the roads if they damage them, this type of thing. So uh, there probably will be a, a, a tax. Uh, there was an article, I believe it was, it was in this morning, Tribune View, that had a table showing that most of the states around us do have such a tax. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Brown. Uh, sometimes we don't show our greatest uh, light here, but I'd like to compliment Council on their very um, heated, very intense, very informative debate on this issue. Um, Paul makes great points. Uh, many of us feel that way. And I respect Paul's decision. Um, this is one of those votes that you have to weigh how you feel on protection for the people. Um, 
I remember when we passed a, a similar ordinance for um, our, our new dancing ordinance. Um, that was a very heated debate also. And by excluding different districts, you sometimes leave the door open for uh, a challenge. And then when that ordinance is thrown out, these individuals can do whatever they want, when they want, where they want. So there's a lot of things to consider here, but I'm very proud of this council, all members, for their participation in, in this very, very heated issue that is going to have implications across our community as it is across the state. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brian. Yes, Mayor Morton? Yes. Uh, I think it's important. Uh, a lot of people are probably thinking who might not be familiar with, uh, with this ordinance enough to know that you just can't have some oil company come into your backyard because you need a minimum, I believe it's 10 acres for a board ordinance says. It has to be a 10 acre area before it can even be considered. So if you're living in a normal housing situation in Bethel Park, you probably aren't going to be affected at all. In my Thank you, Mayor. Any other discussion, Council? Mr. Duke. Yeah, just just to clarify one thing, uh, um, Mr. Mayor, in this ordinance there is no size provision. What the the requirement is based on the DEP requirements. It's state regulations. We can't supersede anything that the state says. Typically, for getting all the uh, materials in the the water systems. Uh, everything else they'll need a minimum of six make six acres but typically they want to get 10 because of all the buffer requirements that they have to do for that and that leads to a lot of what we were talking about our size restriction in terms of the lot size and the residential districts and such I mean there was a lot of debate um, with mr. Dixon leading the discussion with the Planning Commission uh, about this residentially zoned district and it it was probably the primary primary discussion point was where do you allow these things and how do you allow it and whenever you come down to it we really felt with the Planning Commission and, and the staff and working with the, the solicitor's office we have to be very careful the, we don't set it up that you can't go anywhere and that's a, an exclusionary situation and uh, then like I said like was pointed out if we if we basically say you you know make it so hard that you can't do it then then we're in trouble and everything gets thrown out so we did debate that very very vigorously on a number of different levels Any other discussion mr. chairman one more comment mr. Dixon I uh, th there are some protections built into this ordinance as well the conditional use requirement uh, means that council has to approve anything that's uh, that's proposed uh, but a moment ago when I when I credited mr. Duke and and this council and mr. McTiernan all the, on all the work that we've put into this I neglected to mention the Planning Commission and that was a huge omission on my on my part and I apologize to them they've done a great deal of work on this too there has been a lot of discussion and debate on this and uh, so I just wanted to mention the Planning Commission and, and, and apologize for omitting them Thank you, Mr. Thank Any you. Other further comments from council? Mr. Spagan, please call the roll. O'Brien. Yes. Pate. Yes. Dixon. No. Gibbons. Yes. Hannon. Yes. Harrison. Yes. Mowry. Yes. Six one. Motion passes six one, Mr. Dixon. That is all we have under planning and zoning this evening, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Are there any additional items? Hearing none, can we turn to health, safety, and welfare, and Mr. Pate. There are no items under health, safety, and welfare, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Pape. Are there any additional items? Hearing none, can we turn to public works and maintenance and Mr. O'Brien? Mr. Chairman, there are no items under public works and maintenance. Mr. O'Brien, do you have any additional items? Yes, I have two. I have an announcement. It's that time of year again. I know people don't want to hear it, but it's the 2010 fall leaf collection. Leaf collection is scheduled to start the week of October 18th and continue for six weeks through the fall. There'll be no collection Thanksgiving week. That's November 22nd through the 26th. The final week of collection is the week of November 29th through December 3rd. Residents are to place leaves at the curb on the same day as the regular trash collection. The leaves are to be placed in brown bags, leaf bags available at local stores or in containers clearly marked leaves. They can be easily dumped. The use of plastic bags and receptacles for leaves is prohibited and will not be collected. Leaves must be at the curb by 7 a.m. in the order to issue collection, or sure collection. 
Weeks for leaf collection again, October 18th through the 22nd, October 25th through the 29th, November 1st through the 5th, November 8th through the 12th, November 15th through the 19th, November 29th through the 30th, and December 1st to the 3rd. Remember, there's no leaf collection Thanksgiving week. I have one other issue. I'd like to make uh, somewhat of a, an announcement. Um, the Veterans Memorial Committee has been working on collecting all the names of our fallen people that <clears throat> have lived here in Bethel Park, and we've worked very hard at it. And we seem to run into some stumbling blocks. Um, as, as I've reported before, we're pretty sure that we're pretty close to all the names from World War II back to the American Revolution. Um, one of the big concerns we have is Korea, the Korean War and the Vietnam War. Well, our representative, Matt Smith, after we're having a discussion with him, with myself, Mr. Mari, uh, Mr. Hannon, and Mr. Pate, he's agreed to lend his staff to us to try and find those lost individuals from the Vietnam War. And hopefully through his efforts, uh, we <coughs> might have some of them by this Memorial Day. That would bring a, a, a real joy to my heart because they cannot be forgotten. Those who served from this community went to war and died and, and are forgotten from the Vietnam War. Uh, the contact person in his office is a Lauren Hurley. She's Director of Community and Media Outreach. If anybody out there has any information for Lauren, um, that'd be most appreciated. You can call her at 412-571-2169. Or you can contact myself, Mr. Murray, Mr. Pate, or Mr. Hannon, or Mr. Allen. Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Bryan. Mr. Harrison. <coughs> I asked Mr. Murray uh, uh, to uh, convey some information. <laughs> that this is not the purpose, but I want to mention that people well know I've been involved in uh, Boy Scouts of America almost as long as I've been on council. And uh, uh, the boys to make Eagle, which is the highest ranking scouts, have to get 21 merit badges. Several of them required them. Three of them are citizenship merit badges. One of them is citizenship in the community. And to one of the requirements that has come to a meeting. So we have one of our boys from the troop uh, in the audience, and I want to welcome him. Now, what I really want to do, I, I want to convey a little personal information. Uh, I was barred with hearing impairment in, in both ears. Uh, I'm on my fourth set of hearing aids, the ones I'm wearing now, and none of them have really been satisfactory. For instance, tonight, just in this meeting, when, when the mayor's out there talking to the people with his back to me, or even in discussion up here when people are talking to the other end of the table, I have difficulty hearing. So the, the, uh, the reason I'm telling you this is I recently learned of a, uh, of a company called Envoy Medical, which uh, developed a hearing implant called Esteem that they've had a five-year uh, clinical testing and got FDA approval March the 1st. And, and uh, I'm considering going through that procedure. I get, people know that I get a lot of phone calls. I gather just from the discussion, I probably get a lot more than many of the council members, and I really <coughs> encourage them. But the, the, particularly when ladies call me, they'll tell you that we just start and I'll interrupt and say, I hate to be rude, but to, for us to converse, I ask you to speak up and slow down because somehow my ears, my hearing aids don't seem to integrate the words like uh, uh, normal people do. So uh, as I say, I'm, I'm investigating that. And, and the reason I'm telling you <coughs> is that the if I do that, the implant is, is done surgically, all, almost like a uh, heart pacer, but it, it's sort of a temporary inconvenience for a permanent improvement. Now, why do I say that? If, if, if I get that implant, it's not activated until the healing of the, of the surgical implant. And for an old codger like me, they tell me that may be anywhere from four weeks to six weeks before they can activate. So I'll go through a period where I'm, I'm more hearing impaired than I am now because of, of going through this. So I just wanted to let people know that, that uh, the, I, I'm, I'm seriously considering that. If I do it, I'll let you know. And then I ask for your tolerance in trying to communicate with me. And, and hopefully it'll work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Any other items? Wish you luck, Don. Move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Good night, everyone.
Hi, I'm State Representative Matt Smith, and I'd like to invite you and your family to my fourth annual Senior Fair. The event will take place Thursday, October 7th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Galleria Mall at 1500 Washington Road. As we have in the past, you'll find information about programs and services of assistance to you and your family. My staff and I will also be on hand to answer any questions you have about any state issue. You won't want to miss the health screenings and free flu shots. If you're insured through Medicare or other insurance, please remember to bring your insurance card. Last year, we had over a thousand seniors attend this event and had over 500 individuals immunized against the seasonal flu. Again, that's Thursday, October 7th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Galleria Mall at 1500 Washington Road. If you have any other questions, please feel free to call my office at 412-571-2169 or visit us online at www.pahouse.com slash msmith. Thank you very much. During Comcast Cares Day 2010, Comcast teamed up with Andy Amrine of EV True Value Hardware and his crew of volunteers to update Pathfinder School in Bethel Park. Pathfinder School is an organization that provides education for special needs students in Bethel Park and the surrounding areas. The volunteers participating in Comcast Cares Day 2010 were able to clean, paint, and update the landscaping for the school. Bethel Park would like to recognize and thank Comcast, EV True Value Hardware, and Andy Amrine and his crew of volunteers for their great volunteer service to help Pathfinder School and make a difference in the community. When corporations in the communities they serve work together on projects like Comcast Cares Day, great things are possible. Hi, I'm State Representative Matt Smith and I'm happy to tell you about an event I'm hosting at the Bethel Park Community Center on Friday, September 24th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's a Veterans Resource Fair where you'll be able to find information, speak directly with representatives from the state's veterans homes, the Veterans Leadership Program of Pennsylvania, VA Hospital Benefits Department, National Cemetery of the Alleghenies, and many, many more agencies. You'll receive answers to questions, obtain help filling out forms, and meet with fellow veterans. Whether you're a veteran who's recently come home from Iraq or Afghanistan, or a vet from World War II, the Korean War, or the Vietnam War, we're happy to provide you with this information. If you need any additional information, please feel free to give my office a call at 412-571-2169 or visit us online at www.pahouse.com slash M. Smith. Thank you. Hey, uh, you ready? Of course I am. What are you waiting for? I was waiting for you. So we're going to continue the puppy thing real quick. Okay, places everyone. In a minute! Do I have to do everything myself? You can't do it all by yourself. Um, I'd say that. Sure, I can. I can. No, he can't. And neither can I. So, why don't you come on down to BPTV and help us make some of the great community programs you see on this station every day? Yeah! I mean, we can help you make your TV show ideas a reality. It's pretty awesome. So, come on down. I mean, I am pretty good. But I'm sure I can use your help. <laughs> 